Jack Dorsey stepped down on November 29th as chief executive of Twitter, the social media site he founded in 2006 and navigated through the tumultuous but glorious years. Jack Dorsey is not only counted as the founder of the A company, Twitter, but the social media pioneer whose name has become the synonymous with the company. He cited his belief that the company was ready to move on from its founders. That means he will have more time to spend on Scare, the payment company he also founded and leads, and on his budding fascination with cryptocurrency. Dorsey is a longtime fan of Bitcoin, attributing his passion for the world's biggest cryptocurrency to his function as a foundational internet technology that is not controlled or influenced by any single individual or entity. If I were not a Scare or Twitter, I'd be working on Bitcoin. Dorsey toured the crowd at Bitcoin 2012, a mega conference that drew tens of thousands to Miami in June. Scare had also directed his CryptoFocus project this year. With Dorsey now free of his responsibility at Twitter, many are keen to see what crypto task Scare chose to take next. Some people said that Jack ditched his social media for Bitcoin, and some are even predicting the bubble burst on social media. That prediction is somehow making sense because venture capitalists are pouring billions of dollars into crypto and payment platforms. Twitter, by contrast, have only started to become profitable since 2018, has always been more notable for its political impact than its commercial pull. And Twitter, like the wider social industry of which it is a part, may be experiencing the limit of its growth. In terms of commercial reach, Twitter is no competition for the industry giants such as Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, and TikTok, which each have a well over a billion users. But even Facebook and Instagram are slowing down. And as you already know, Facebook is even trying to expand its industry by changing the company name to Meta. So, it makes sense that investors are looking for the next big thing from technology, and the social media bosses would be searching for the ways to profit from the cryptocurrency bubble. Before he left, Jack Dorsey had been trying to expand Twitter into offering crypto-based payment and non-fungible token services. His replacement as CEO Perk Agrawal was tasked with developing Twitter's crypto strategy, and it seems likely that Twitter will continue to plow the field. At this point, one thing is crystal clear. Jack Dorsey is a true believer of the cryptocurrency, more precisely, only the Bitcoin. Dorsey claimed that it will one day unite a deeply divided country, behind it, and eventually become the world's single currency. Jack Dorsey's departure from the trader gave him more time to focus on his passion to Bitcoin than what kind of future of cryptocurrency Jack Dorsey is drawing of. At first, Ubiquitous Currency Days after Jack Dorsey announced that he was stepping down as Twitter CEO, the other company Dorsey runs announced that it was changing its corporate name from Scare to Block. Dorsey has spent the last five odd years fascinated with cryptocurrency and blockchain, primarily Bitcoin. He has heavily promoted and supported the development of the Bitcoin Lightning Network and supported Bitcoin developers directly through the unit called the Scare Crypto. At Twitter, he recently rolled out lightning-based tipping and before stepping down, promised NFT, non-fungible token avatar integration. Then let's start with Scare, now Blog. Blog is a payment and commerce solution provider which encompasses several individual businesses. You will notice a number of them have direct or indirect connection to Bitcoin, which make the new name pretty appropriate. This includes Scare, the cost of payment solution for merchant. Cash App, a digital wallet and mobile money transfer service. Spiral, support Bitcoin development. Tidal, a music streaming platform. TBD, a platform for decentralized Bitcoin exchanges. Dorsey's passion for Bitcoin and decentralization means Block has already made a big stride in crypto. Here are some key points on Scarce Crypto Journey. The company launched Bitcoin Trading 2018 with a Cash App, allowing users to buy and sell Bitcoin. In 2019, the company formed Scare Crypto, an independent team dedicated to contributing to Bitcoin open source work. And just last year, Scare launched a cryptocurrency open patent alliance, COPA, a non-profit organization aimed at pooling patent to encourage crypto innovation. Scare said in July it was creating a new business dedicated to building decentralized finance DeFi application for Bitcoin which Dorsey described as an open developer platform with a sole goal for making it easy to create non-custodial, permissionless, and decentralized finance services. 
In October, the scare CEO said the company might jump into the Bitcoin mining business. And early last month, the payment company released a white paper detailing plans to launch TBDEX, TBDEX, its own decentralized exchange for buying and selling cryptocurrencies. The payment giant is also built its own hardware wallet to make Bitcoin custody more mainstream. Scare has put Bitcoin on its balance sheet, attributing the choice to an alignment of values. The company recorded a fair value of $351.7 million on its Bitcoin investment as of September 30th. Then it's time to go one step further. Jack Dorsey wanted Bitcoin to be the ubiquitous currency and trying to find out a way to make it more ubiquitous as the actual payment method. Like the choices pay with Visa, PayPal, Apple Pay, and Bitcoin. But the huge burial of that is costly and time-consuming process of settling each of the transactions on the blockchain. Normally it takes 10 more minutes to complete a transaction on the blockchain. While the Bitcoin can process about 5 transactions per second, PayPal can do about 200, Visa can do about 2000. So Jack Dorsey has been hugely invested on the startups and projects who can solve the transaction frictions. So let's take some examples. First, we have Lightning Lab. Lightning Lab works with Lightning Network, a protocol that's something called the second layer of Bitcoin. Champions of the newer layer, including Lightning Labs, sees it as a way to exponentially boost the number and the speed of the transaction of the Bitcoin blockchain without increasing the size of the blocks. Batches of the transactions that are converting and subsequently shared on blockchain's public ledger. It has raised $2.5 million in seized funding from the Jack Dorsey. And second with Salo. Salo is a mobile-first platform that makes financial applications and crypto patent access to anyone with mobile devices. Only need phone number, email address. Then you can transfer, pay, and even lend crypto. Salo has garnered more than $65 million from backers, including Jack Dorsey. We believe that Bitcoin has the potential to be more ubiquitous currency in the future, says Scare Chief Financial Officer in a statement. As it grows in adoption, we intend to learn and participate in a disciplined way. For a company that is building products based on a more inclusive future, this investment is a step on that journey. Investments such as this come at a critical time for the crypto industry. I don't think the space is over-invested yet. Crypto is the intersection of the financial service and technology. That is literally 60% of the economy. The second. Truly DeFi Jack Dorsey is a Bitcoin maximalist. He believes and dreams of the future of the cryptocurrency become ubiquitous and mainstream. Dorsey thinks Bitcoin could be the future currency of the internet and that could address some of the inequalities in the current financial system. So in one sentence, Jack Dorsey dreamed a truly decentralized financial system, never controlled by A or some entities, even the government. Jack Dorsey has predicted Bitcoin will eventually replace the US dollar. In August, Dorsey tweeted that Bitcoin will unite a deeply divided country and eventually become the world's single currency. The idea of Bitcoin replacing the US dollar isn't as far as it seems. In September, El Salvador became the first nation to introduce Bitcoin as legal tender. Then let's go into the deeper stories. So many people still believe cryptocurrency is a giant, Glover get rich kick scheme. Others still dismiss the entire thing as a speculation driving Fed in the best case, a criminal enterprise in the worst. But amid the noise, the enthusiasm and the hype, we might be losing the most important story. The way cryptocurrency is changing lives in the developing world. Take the example Cuba. A country where internet penetration went from less than 40% in 2015 to the estimated 70 to 80% today. Like most people, Cubans want to buy things and sell things online. But unlike most people, they cannot buy anything online using a debit or credit card. Due to the US sanctions, ordinary Cubans find themselves cut off from the global financial system. They cannot start a Spotify subscription by a domain name or pay for the website hosting service using a card. This means that if Cubans wish to partake in online commerce, especially with another country, they have to use the cryptocurrency. And where there is a need, there is a way. Cubans have found solutions such as Bitrefill, a site that sells gift cards from Spotify and other companies for cryptocurrency. 
Data from Bitrefill for June 2021 shows that four times as many people buy Cuban diesel product using cryptocurrencies as buy similar as product on a population-adjusted basis. Crypto has deeply penetrated the country to the extent that the Cuba's Communist Party, a conservative Marxist institution not known for its technological savviness. While crypto adoption in Cuba has been a bottom of phenomenon, in El Salvador, Bitcoin has been proclaimed legal tender by the country's controversial president, Nayib Bukele. President Bukele claimed that the government-sponsored Bitcoin wallet already has more users than the entire Salvadoran banking system, potentially throwing a lifeline to the thousands of unbanking individuals. This Bitcoin wallet operates partly on a Lightning network, a system that allows for the cheaper and faster cryptocurrency transactions. You can now pay instantly with a Bitcoin in every Salvadoran McDonald's and Starbucks which certainly sound futuristic and exciting. Further south in Venezuela, Bitcoin is slowly becoming an integral part of the economy. Due to the current controls, Venezuelan banks are not connected to the rest of the world, and therefore Bitcoin is used to move value in and out of the country using peer-to-peer -peer markets where people can easily exchange Bitcoin for cash. Today, peer-to-peer -peer crypto market has been widely acknowledged as a key component of the Venezuelan foreign exchange market. But the real leader in the Bitcoin trading is not Latin America but the Sub-Saharan Africa. Useful Tulips, a website that tracks peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading across the world, now report that trading volume in the Sub-Saharan Africa are currently equal to those of the North America and will soon exceed them. In countries such as Nigeria, the government has imposed strict capital controls and moving value across borders can prove next to impossible. It's not surprising that people in Africa are increasingly using cryptocurrencies for international transactions. So whatever you think of crypto, its role as force for good in some parts of the world should not be ignored. Bottom up is the great for the start. From fixing up the shadow of the central land to the truly DeFi, Jack Dorsey believes this would be the starting point of the truly decentralized finance. Lastly, the true Web 3.0 The Web 3.0 is the latest Silicon Valley buzzword which is being dubbed as the next phase of the internet. It has got tech and cryptocurrency enthusiasts buzzing but others, Jack Dorsey in particular. But what is the Web 3.0 and can this future vision of the decentralized and egalitarian internet world? So let's start with this one. What is the Web 3.0? Put simply, Web 3.0 is an umbrella term for the online ecosystem that costs out the big middlemen on the internet. Platforms on Web 3.0 are not owned by the central gatekeepers, and you wouldn't navigate the internet through the search engines such as Google. It uses blockchain, the same system used by the cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens. Then what is so bad about the Web 1.0 and 2.0? The first version of the World Wide Web was launched by the Sir Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. Back then, the few people who had the knowledge could put information online in a decentralized way. Then Web 2.1 came some 10 years later and started with the development of the tools that were easy to use, allowing anyone to upload contents online via tech giants such as Google, Twitter, and Facebook, now Meta. But these free tools supplied by the tech companies were also harvesting our personal data to be used for tailored advertisement and marketing campaigns. In theory, Web 3.0 will be the combination of the two earlier versions of the internet but will take the power away from the tech giants and corporations and put it back into the people's hand. And instead of exchanging our data to upload contents online, users can become participants and shareholders by earning tokens on a blockchain system which will allow you to have a say over a network. Web 2.0 is a transmission of information, but Web 3.0 is a transmission of values," said Pascal Gauthier, CEO of the crypto hardware wallet leader, one of the France unicorn. Yes, it's confusing. Let's make it simple. In general, Web 3.0 is a possible future internet where all data and contents is registered on blockchains, tokenized or managed and assessed on a peer-to-peer -peer distribution network in order to democratize the internet put power into the hands of content creators and take away control from governments and corporations. Frankly speaking, that was the idea behind the original internet with the internet protocol and domain name system. The decentralized nature of the internet was supposed to erase border and put power into the hands of the users. The Web 3.0 sounds like a great idea, especially to the cryptocurrency enthusiasts, techno libertarians, and venture capitals looking to place the next big bet. So here's a great example. 
We already have the decentralized social network like Mastodon that offers users an alternative to the social network owned by the big companies. Decentralization of power on the internet is a major personal theme for Jack Dorsey. At Twitter, be spearheaded the funding of the project called Blue Sky, which envisioned a set of openly published standards for social media companies, so users of the different social media networks can communicate more easily with one another. New Twitter CEO Park Agarwal has been also central to chasing this vision, which recalled the way the internet was originally built on top of the common standards. For example, Jack Dorsey once banned the former President Trump from Twitter, writing that they had faced an extraordinary and untenable circumstance, and that he did not feel pride about the decision. In the same thread, he took time to call out a NASA's Twitter-sponsored initiative called Blue Sky, which is aiming to build up an open, decentralized standard for social media. Jack Dorsey tweeted that, You don't own Web 3.0, the VCs own it. And later, Elon Musk CEO of the Tesla tweeted that, Has anyone seen the Web 3.0? I can't find it. And their criticism on Web 3.0 is pretty fair and something Web 3.0 creators need to be content with. Despite the matter of VCs, Web 3.0 Aculus says blockchains and cryptocurrency systems will allow users to own the next generation of connected games, apps, and services instead of giving up all the power and, of course, the profit. All of the stories about the Web 3.0 seems a little naive and futuristic, but it's awesome that all of this revolution is backed by the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Thank you so much for watching my video and please subscribe to my channel and share your thumbs up. I will hop around the world and bring lots of thousands of funny stories to you guys. And see you again. Bye!